welcome to the age of degeneracy. The number of people dying from drug overdoses in the United States is at its highest level ever. Deaths from alcohol abuse have almost doubled since 1999. Given that America seems to be collectively more inebriated than Hunter S. Thompson on the last day of Woodstock, you'd think conservatives would be more vehement in promoting social conservatism. Instead, they appear to be doing the exact opposite. The mainstream conservative movement appears to be awkwardly crowbarring hedonistic moral relativism into its core message in a desperate attempt to appeal to younger voters. How do you do, fellow kids? Completely jettisoning social conservatism in the process. At this point, what are you even conserving? You don't have to be Christian to be conservative. You don't have to be pro-life to be conservative. You don't have to hate weed to be conservative. You don't have to be straight to be conservative. You don't have to be traditional to be conservative. Hello, my fellow conservative people. Now let me explain how being a liberal makes you a conservative. Your kids are being re-educated by predatory drag queens about non-binary genders, snorting ketamine and twerking. Abortion has gone from being a shameful last resort to a celebrated sacred virtue, and family units bonded by faith have been replaced with atomized, drug-addled, broken homes. But hey, those GDP numbers are still looking quite good, so fuck it, right? When my daughter gets jailed for dealing drugs to pansexual college kids at a gay pride parade because she couldn't afford her third abortion, at least I'll still have my rugged individualism. I mean, why not capitulate on every last single social moray, given that you've thrown the towel in on virtually everything else? American conservatives would personally dress up in drag and read books to children if they thought it would raise the GDP. Why, yes, I'm pro-choice. Why, yes, I support LGBT. Why, yes, I do smoke weed. Why, yes, I am an atheist. That's right, I'm a conservative. If you are all those things, then fine. But you're about as conservative as Myra Hindley is kind to children. If you only knew how bad things really are. If you only knew how many Christian conservatives engage in the kind of lurid behaviour that would put any hedonistic leftist to shame. If you only knew how many of them posture as role models for young men while living the very lifestyles that wreck young men's lives. I'm trying not to sound too preachy, but if you're gonna grandstand all day about embodying the antidote to amoral, impetuous libertinism, about being a fine, upstanding conservative, then start living like one. Now, I'm not saying you can't go out from time to time and have a laugh and a drink with your mates. Believe me, I'm no Mother Teresa. I've bathed in the worldly waters of the profane on many occasions. But when public intoxication and gratuitous debasement becomes the defining characteristic of Western masculinity, something's gone horribly wrong. Most guys think it's manly to pound beers all weekend, but then they can't run more than a couple of miles or hammer out 25 push-ups. The promotion of binge drinking as manly is a marketing ploy to trick young men into forking over their hard-earned cash to a giant corporation. Beer literally converts testosterone to estrogen in your body and gives you bitch tits. So why is its overconsumption being promoted? as a masculine trait. Degeneracy is a broad topic, but at its core, you'll find alcoholism. And nobody does alcoholism quite like the British. Brits have the worst drinking problem in Europe. Over a million of them are drinking at levels that will knock two to three decades off their lives. Researchers describe this group as the most severely affected population of alcohol users, chronically intoxicated, to the extent that their organs are being poisoned and their perception is impaired on a daily basis. Unlike virtually every other country in the world, Britain is unique for having women who consume as much alcohol as men. This is a depiction of English public alcoholism in the 18th century. This is a depiction of English public alcoholism in the 21st century. Wow, we've come such a long way. Walk through the centre of any UK city on a Saturday night and you'd be forgiven for thinking you'd stumbled onto the set of 28 Days Later. I can see them, they're coming! Ah! What's the matter with you? Oh! The crescendo of mindless, screeching, scantily clad, shit faced women and salivating, aggressive, vulgarian young men combines to create a kind of debauched, jarring cacophony that sounds like it's been ripped straight from a Lucio Fulci horror movie. In England, there is scant difference between the sound of people enjoying themselves and people being murdered. <laughs> oh, 
If the English disease used to be football hooliganism, it's now been replaced by hooliganism of a different kind. A putrid, visceral onslaught against everything that's pure and decent. But Brits aren't content with keeping their degeneracy in-house. No, no, no. They export it all over the world. 19,000 people sought consular assistance last year, according to the latest figures by the Foreign and Commonwealth Office, into British behaviour abroad. One of their favourite things to do is to get drunk and urinate on war memorials. According to the mayor of Riga in Latvia, this is their speciality. Brits also love to inflict their barbarism on Spain, where residents in Mallorca are so sick of their loutish behaviour, graffiti has appeared all over the capital, which reads, Tourists go home, and tourist, you are the terrorist. In Barcelona, locals staged huge protests demanding British people leave. ISIS expressed their distaste by slaughtering a bunch of Brits on a beach in Tunisia. That was a bit much. Visit Benidorm. <laughs> It's like the human equivalent of one of those safari parks where monkeys sling shit at you, furiously masturbate in front of your children and steal your windscreen wipers. Only with British people. <laughs> Lovely. Meanwhile, in a Magaluf nightclub, a British teenager was filmed performing oral sex on 24 men in return for a free holiday. She ended up winning a $5 cocktail. Why do you think giant transnational corporations and the elitists who run them constantly promote binge drinking, lottery tickets and gambling? To make vast amounts of money, yeah, but it's also to ensure that the underclass remains mired in its own self-indulgent, self-destructive deterioration. It's kinda hard to be upwardly mobile when most of your time is divided between pissing away your disposable income in the betting shop, being completely paralytic, and waking up in a pool of your own vomit. And despite there being no widespread binge drinking culture in America, when you extrapolate out Americans' drinking habits, about half of American women would be considered alcoholic, and about 70% of men would be borderline or alcoholic. So-called deaths of despair, deaths from suicide, drug and alcohol abuse kill more Americans than those who died during the Vietnam War or at the height of the crack epidemic. Deaths from despair have doubled from 22.7 deaths of despair per 100,000 Americans in the year 2000 to 45.8 per 100,000 in 2017, easily eclipsing all prior 20th century highs. The US suicide rate in 2017 was 33% higher than just 20 years ago. Opioid deaths claim 130 lives every single day. What's driving the despair? Increased availability and addictiveness of drugs caused by lax drug laws, something this new breed of hedonistic conservatives seem to support, collapsing birth rates and declining marriage rates, something this new breed of hedonistic conservatives seem to support, increasing secularization, something this new breed of hedonistic conservatives seem to support, and social media, which when it comes to giving them carte blanche to do whatever they want, my private company, is something this new breed of hedonistic conservatives seem to support. What fantastic advice does that legacy bastion of conservatism, the National Review, have for its readership? Many of whom are at huge risk of becoming another death of despair statistic. Lift weights? Go to church? Have babies? No. Watch more television! Obey, consume, conform. It really boils down to our ability to accept. We don't need pessimism. There are no <laughs> limits. <laughs> it figures it would be something like this. Another factor that drives despair amongst working class whites and leads them to alcoholism is stagnant paychecks and diminishing economic opportunities, which is why they voted for Trump. Strange then that the Trump administration continues to import more than one million legal immigrants every single year, something that exacerbates that problem. But to maintain their own hedonistic lifestyle of decadence, the elite needs a steady supply of mass immigration. Servant class jobs, which exist largely to cater for the needs of the elite, are booming in America. 
massively outstripping overall job growth. This sector grew 114% between 2008 and 2018, while overall US jobs grew just 7% in that same period. The ultra wealthy needs to keep importing their wage slaves to massage and pedicure them, because you've got to look good for that date with a $2,000 escort girl or that exclusive trip to Orgy Island, and for young people the picture is even less rosy. Amongst millennials there's been a 47% increase in major depression since 2013. From 2007 to 2017, adults aged 18 to 34 saw a 69% increase in alcohol-related deaths, a 108% increase in drug-related deaths, largely fueled by the opioid crisis, and a 35% increase in death by suicide. But can you really blame them for rushing to the refuge of an inebriated stupor? given the example that older generations have set. It is not the young people that degenerate, they are not spoiled till those of mature age are already sunk into corruption. Crippling student loan debt, unaffordable housing, and the disintegration of entire communities, familial or religious, with whom they could share their burdens. All those factors can be blamed on boomers, many of whom are now too busy being off their faces on fentanyl and couldn't give a shit. Another reason why we appear to be more susceptible to degeneracy than ever is that we have too much time on our hands. All the devil will find work for idle hands to do. This spare time will only increase with automation. Will universal basic income and a 15 hour work week really bring us happiness? Or merely more opportunities to wallow in the existential dread of our own meaningless vacuity? The Industrial Revolution and its consequences have been a disaster for the human race. There is a possibility, a hope, that we will work less. Yet many new stupid forms of amusement might fill our free time. I still believe in work and creativity. If we do not have enough things to do, even if we will feel happy just sitting, watching films and drinking, it will be a very stupid existence it will soon get dire. But Paul, my freedom! The freedom to be a soulless husk of a human, slaving away at a corporate job to make ends meet so that you have enough money to blow on stimulants. Some freedom. Would you give up this for this? Would you give up this for this? Would you give up an endless cycle of nihilistic barren distractions for authentic life-sustaining happiness? Apparently not. But hey, if the situation was hopeless, their propaganda would be unnecessary. And don't get me wrong, pathological progressivism is as much to blame as anything else. Did you hear about this new sexual fetish? Couples repeatedly getting pregnant than having multiple abortions. What a time to be alive. Question regarding abortions and breeding fetish. I have a female friend who has a really powerful fetish for breeding. She has never used any type of birth control. She is with a male partner currently who is just like her, into breeding, and they have been practicing their fetish for quite a few abortions. I know this fetish. My girlfriend and me have the same fetish. My girlfriend enjoy her pregnancies, and she enjoys the abort t t t on her preferred date for the abort is between 20 and 24 weeks of gestation. I enjoy it to make her pregnant, and I enjoy the time of her pregnancy. She has no menstrual period, and she is sexual, very active. Sexuality without prevention is very emotional and inexpensive. In the last 10 years in our relationship, we have done seven aborts and my girlfriend is pregnant again with a little girl. Abortion fetish is a great method for birth control. Do not be angry about your girlfriend, but let them enjoy their pregnancies. This is what a baby looks like at 20 weeks. That's halfway through the pregnancy. They have ears, toes, fingers. They feel pain. It is good and rare to hear of a couple, both men and women, where both members are into abortion and pregnancy. This is a wonderful and potent example of personal power, where sex meets violence and creation combines with destruction. Thank you for sharing your exciting romance and would like to know about how this latest abortion was for you. I can imagine that it's a very bonding experience between you and your partner. Deliberately creating a baby, letting it almost fully develop, then wantonly murdering it to satisfy some deranged sexual fetish. Wonderful! Breaking Iceland's new liberalised abortion law has gone into effect. Women are now able to access abortion on request up to 22 weeks of pregnancy and minors are no longer obligated to obtain parental or guardian consent. Disgusting. Nah, delicious. Seven billion is too many. We should scoop the little fuckers' innards out and mail them to your kind. Thanks for that ringing endorsement.
Alice. But who needs babies when you can blow half your income on some 40-year-old cam girl to strip for you on the internet? Speaking of degenerate fetishes, listen to this. I came out to my family about my fetishes and I've never felt better. We were halfway through dinner when I had worked up the courage to come out to my father, mother, sister and brother as a toilet slave. My sister left the table angry. My brother, in his normal insensitive way, just laughed. My mother and father looked concerned, so I explained to them that everything was fine and that being a toilet slave only meant that I derived pleasure from a woman defecating and urinating in my mouth. They seemed confused, but also accepting of their toilet slave son, which makes me emotional just thinking about it. How about furries deliberately getting their hands amputated so they can satisfy their poor fetish? Where's that meme of God pressing the reset button when you need it? There it is. So in summary, everyone's atomized, disenfranchised, depressed and lonely, mainly because of modern technology, the loss of faith and the complete failure of hypercapitalism to enrich their lives with any purpose or meaning, and to cope with that, they're all on drugs, becoming alcoholics and killing themselves, or a combination of all three. Or they're turning to increasingly more degenerate sexual fetishes and alternative lifestyles, including sex infanticide, getting people to poop in their mouths, or getting their limbs hacked off. And many conservatives are so petrified about losing appeal or appearing uncool that they've abandoned all their conservative principles and won't say a word against it. Them GDP numbers though. My voice is being silenced by free speech hating Silicon Valley giants who want me disappeared forever. It's absolutely crucial that you support me by donating at Subscribestar. It's also vital that you sign up for my free newsletter at summit.news forward slash newsletter so we never lose contact. And please support my sponsor Turboforce, the powerful new energy drink without the come down. Link in description.